Hey guys, I'm Michael here. Welcome to the channel. We give cruise tips to hopefully help things go a little smoother for you. And so maybe you'll know what to expect and maybe even save you some money. So hey, subscribe and check out our other videos. All right, let's get started here. Our first one is going to be to book early. That's a biggie. Uh, by booking early, you actually get a better selection for which, uh, which cabin you want. You also get a better chance to choose where you want to go. It's usually cheaper the earlier you book. And also, that gives you more time to plan and more time to pay for it. Now, also, while we're on this topic of uh, booking early and being on time is the other thing I want to mention. When you uh, book your cruise, when you get to the port there, you want to definitely, I would even say, be early because anything can happen. You don't want to miss that ship. I know a lot of people will fly in the day before. That's usually what I do. Uh, that way it gives me a little peace of mind. I know I'm not going to be getting off that plane three hours before my ship leaves. And if there's some sort of delay or flight delay, oh, <laughs> that's not good. If it be the case that you're going to fly in, though, the same day, you may want to look at travel insurance with the cruise company because they will cover you. If your flight's delayed and you miss the ship, they will cover you on that. But to me, to fly in the day before gives you an extra day, too. You can check out the place if it's, you know, Jacksonville, Miami, wherever. Lots of lots of things to do there as well. Also, speaking of being on time, when you go to different islands where you port, whether it be Cozumel, Grand Cayman, wherever you're going, also keep in mind that there is a time that the ship leaves there. And a lot of times they'll ask that you be back on board 30 minutes prior to that. Now, also, keep in mind that at the islands, there may be a time difference. When you leave from whatever port you leave from, a key point to know is whatever time it is when you leave, that's going to be the time for that ship throughout your cruise. So you may go places that have a different time zone. Just be mindful of that because you really don't want to get left behind. <laughs> that's not going to be fun. And it happens almost every cruise that I've, I've seen. But uh, don't let that be you. <laughs> All right. Second tip, pack light. The reason I say that, when you get to your destinations, the different places you go, you may want to buy um, souvenirs, T-shirts, things like that. And if you've got your suitcase already overpacked, when you leave, you're not going to have room for your stuff that you're going to bring back. So that's a good point to pack light. There's also laundry facilities on the ship if you need. You can always wash clothes. But yeah, allow yourself a little extra room there. All right, third tip. And a lot of people ask this one. When booking a stateroom, balcony versus interior, which which to choose? That's a personal, a personal choice, really. For me, personally, it's got to be a balcony. There is a price difference. There's a, a, a substantial price difference. And a lot of people will look at it and say, well, you know, the interior room, we're not really going to be there much anyway. We can save some money by getting the interior room. That's fine, too. That's perfect. But for me, I want that balcony. I mean, to me, if I'm going to sit and look at four walls, I can do that at home. But if it's a money issue or a money question and not being able to go the extra mile for the balcony, if that's going to hold you back to keep you from cruising, then no. Go for the interior room. Do what you got to do. Don't let that be a deal breaker, in other words. But again, that's personal choice. All right. The next tip. There's so many things to do on board. There's so many activities going on, especially on sea days and at night. Each day they'll bring you the fun times uh, for Carnival. Uh, the other ships have their own paper or schedule as well. They will usually bring it to you the day ahead. And I always like to look that over the night before, uh, maybe before you go to bed. Look at what's going to be going on the next day. 
So you kind of have a general idea of what you may want to do. I know a lot of people even bring highlighter, you know, maybe a highlighter and highlight on there, you know, yellow marks what you might want to do the next day. But with that, I'm just saying think ahead, you know, don't don't be like, well, you know, wait till four o'clock and say, well, what's going on at four o'clock? Then you're going to see how much you've already missed. That's no fun. All right. Next tip, cell phone usage. Cell phone usage on a cruise ship can be very costly. Uh, the thing there is, please, please check with your provider before you go. See what kind of plans they have. They may be able to give you a temporary plan for your cruise, or you may just not want to use it at all. That's, you know, that's up to you. All right, next tip will be gratuity. Now, for gratuity on the ship, these guys, you know, they work really hard, and they work long hours, and a big part of uh, their income actually comes from tips. So just be mindful of that and take care of those people. You also have the option to prepay tips before you, uh, before you book. Another thing there, though, um, I usually take like a little bit of cash uh, just in case if I want to tip somebody or whatever you can. All right, the next tip is dining. Wow, I've got tons of videos on, on dining on a cruise ship. You know, check those out. But this one's a little bit different. Uh, your dining times for evening, you can choose early dining, late dining, or anytime dining. For me, I like to choose the early dining because you get to sit with the same people each day. And these are people you kind of get to know. And it's, uh, it's very interesting and it's rewarding, I think. I don't want to choose the later dining. And the reason I don't, if, well, the reason I don't is because the later dining time is most always when a lot of the activities are going on, such as the shows, the comedy shows, things like that. And I don't want to be at dinner and, and miss a lot of those activities. So if I can't get the uh, early dining, I will go with any time dining. Also with that, another tip. If you're not really sure if you're going to go to the dining room for dinner or not, they do post the menus early. You can go by and see what's going to be for, you know, what's for supper. Uh, and if it's going to be something you like, maybe something you maybe not as fond of, then that gives you time to plan, uh, make other plans. All right, next tip. Now, this is something that is certainly not necessary, and I really don't know anybody else that does it. Personally, I mean, I'm sure people do because it's there for a reason. But for me, I like to buy onboard credit before I cruise. And I'll explain that. Basically, you can go on Carnival's website or you can do it by phone. If you want to purchase, say, $100 onboard credit or $200 onboard credit. For me, I usually buy $200 onboard credit because I know me. You know, I, I know I'm going to be spending money. Not, you know, to set an amount or to say, well, how much should I do that? You know, that's, some people don't spend anything. So it, that varies really just according to the person. But for me, the reason I do that is because I'll plan my cruise maybe six months in advance at least. And I'll go ahead and purchase that as well. And that way, when it comes time for the cruise, everything's paid for and I'm good to go. So at the end of that cruise, I don't walk away with a huge bill that I've run up on the ship. I've prepaid ahead and I'm good to go. You know, if I spend more, that's fine, you know, but it won't be as much as it would have been. So that's something to maybe think about is the onboard credit. And you can buy that in different, different increments. All right. Next tip. You need to keep your ID and a form of payment with you when you port. In other words, you want to have like your driver's license or your passport, and maybe a credit card or cash. Now, of course, you know, you don't really use a lot of cash on the boat because everything's with your sign and sale card, of course. But on the islands, I've found a lot of times, especially shopping, you can get more with cash than you can with a credit card. I'm not sure why that is exactly. I think there's some maybe fees or something. Uh, that they end up having to pay with, with credit cards. But uh, they'll ask sometimes, they'll ask you, is this going to be, you know, cash or credit card? You know, if it's credit card, it's this much. If it's cash, it's this much. 
So a lot of times you can do better with cash. The other thing is uh, keeping your ID with you. Uh, You may want to uh, visit restaurants or purchase alcohol, things like that while you're on the uh, while you're on the island. All right. Brings us to the very last tip, which I think is one of the best ones. And this is to please, please, on this cruise, get out, meet people, talk to people, have fun. Don't be reserved. You know, try new things. This is your vacation. Make the most of it. It's not every day that you're out there on that ocean like that. So you know what? Talk to people. You'll meet some fascinating people. I know I have. And again, the big thing is have fun. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up. Again, my name's Michael. How about a thumbs up? And hey, subscribe. We've got a lot more stuff coming up. Thank you so much for watching and take care. (laughs) 